Hey everyone, 9.4 wasn't the biggest patch, but there are some cool new builds popping up in Korea that we can take a look at today and might just maybe give you a few ideas. Before those, I want to try something a little bit different to start, just to mention a few that aren't new, really normally wouldn't be in this video, but are actually insane. So Kassin is a perfect example, he still dominates the mid lane because once you get to 30 minutes in the game, he becomes the strongest champion in the entire game basically, and that is why he's always a good mid laner in Korea. With Riven and Yorick, the new Conqueror synergizes too well with them, they were already pretty strong, but now they're even stronger and and kind of top of the role. Jarvan is also an early game powerhouse jungler, which is perfect for a gank more asked questions later jungle meta that wants to snowball early. We're gonna hop into our first pick today. That is probably one of the strongest champions in the entire game. This is a lot of things coming together, but Rek'Sai is now the best jungler in Korea and the best early game. She was buffed this patch, more fury generation, a lot of things to make her smoother or easier to play, and her ultimate is now basically impossible to dodge. I genuinely do think that being able to flash Rek'Sai's ultimate damage was a big reason she wasn't that viable, which isn't the problem anymore. Her ultimate does a ton of damage, by the way, as well. Even just rank one, it is 100 base, 200% of your AD, and 20% of their missing health. That is rank one as well. Like later, you get up to like 400, 30% uh, missing health as well. So it's probably at least like 700 plus damage guaranteed you cannot dodge anymore. Think of it kind of like how Camille used to be, but better. More ganks, more damage, and more annoying. The tunnel system is your best friend. It allows you to bypass wards, gank from a mile away, and a flash knockup is pretty much a guaranteed kill once every five minutes. So she's a gang monster, right? Snowballing lanes left, right, and center, perma ganking early game, but then let's add in the new Conqueror. Healing and true damage after five stacks, she can get this up so fast with her Q, so by the time you bite down at max fury with your E and your ultimate, it's completely active. Conqueror gives AD as well, and your bite has a 170% AD ratio when at max fury, and ultimate is 200%, so it is a massive boost. Basically, the buffs for her were great. Uh, you can gank like a machine, and Conqueror is pretty overpowered on her right now. Not all of these are going to be Conqueror, Conqueror, by the way, but we've got a really cool one I mentioned a little bit yesterday. Conqueror Cassiopeia is a thing now. Conqueror was changed to not only stack from basic attacks, but also spells now. Plus, it gives adaptive damage, so AP, as well as the true damage and the healing. Cassiopeia already has healing from her E, and now you have even more, plus even more from your runes. Taste of Blood and Ravenous Hunter will be there, plus we can take Overheal, yes, Overheal in Precision, which is insane, but it does actually work from all of it together. Now, how it works is her poison will only stack Conqueror one once every five seconds, but your E will apply a stack each time. And in this build, we have gone back to maxing E first most of the time. It also means though that once Conqueror is active, as long as you have poison ticking on somebody somewhere in the fight, Conqueror will refresh and stay active. So basically in a team fight, you need to stack it up quickly at the very start. But then after that point, you have even more AP, you have true damage healing, and that should stay up the entire time. Cassiopeia has had a lot of nerfs recently. She isn't S tier like she was before, but none of them target Emax and a specific playstyle. Plus your W Miasma is probably one of the most broken spells in the entire game, so that definitely helps. Moving on to Galio support now. One that you might have seen in a few pro games, a Gorilla whipped this out, I think in the LEC recently, and he almost solo killed their Vlad at one point. Galio has some insane base damage, but he's also extremely tanky and a very good protection support. It works a little bit like Alistair. You can dive in, you can knock somebody up, taunt them afterwards, lock them in place for your AD carry to follow up and kill them. Then in team fights, you have a massive AoE knockup and damage. You can tank, you'll have a redemption, a one and a half second taunt as well. The ultimate is also an amazing roaming tool. We have to mention this. If you can fight 2v2 mid now, Galio can join and make that a 3v2, which is easily going to turn that around. It's kind of like having a nocturne ganking. You don't have to be in exactly the right place, just the general area. It's the same for Galio. You even have percentage health damage on your Q and at least 40% magic reduction, 20% AD reduction while taunting. So you can max your Q first for more damage if you want to, uh, but you can also max your W first for that damage reduction to tank even longer, and obviously we also have Aftershock for that as well. When you think about this pick, a bunch of crowd control, very tanky, good damage, really good roaming, it's like bringing a tank support that can actually do some more work on its own. Now, okay, so Vayne is nothing new, right? She's been strong ever since that change that meant she can tumble even more during her ultimate, but I actually noticed that we have a new build pop up in Korea that is insanely good. I've been playing this as well, it's pretty overpowered. Some of you might have already done this, but it is insane. Remember that Kai's build ages ago that I talked about. We swapped out our fleet full work for pressing attack and we went domination for the healing instead. Well, now Vayne is doing that as well. We don't have a ton of abilities to heal from, so it can seem a bit weird, but Ravenous Hunter does heal from the true damage on your silver bolts. So when you throw in a Rage Blade on top of it, which is going to be your second item, and apply your bolts every two hits instead, that is an insane amount of heals that keep you alive. Pressing attack isn't anything new on Vayne either. It has really good synergy with your silver bolts, but before we would kind of die a little bit too much, we needed the safety that the fleet provided. The new fantasy 
Phantom Dancer though and this domination tree makes up for that and that is why this can suddenly work on this patch. At the moment in Korea, Vayne doesn't have a negative win rate at any stage of the game. She is just literally that strong. Phantom Dancer has helped that even more, having less damage but a shield to survive the game while still building for crit as well. It's kind of like the legit most perfect thing that could have happened for Vayne. Sivir, Kaylin and Jinx by the way seem to be the main ones that can actually beat her now since they have very high range and don't even have to get close to Vayne in the first place but everybody else is kind of screwed. This is not going to be the first time that we've talked about Dark Harvest AP Shivana, but Dark Harvest with Sorcery Second is like a 60% win rate so far on the patch. It isn't normal Shivana though. This is Fireball Wizard AP Shivana that runs around pressing your E. I have seen a few of these. I actually saw one yesterday in my solo key game on stream, and it is the most hit and miss thing ever, but they can just scorch everybody and you cannot do anything. Literally, you're going to half health people with the first part of your E, the Fireball, and then burn them for the rest afterwards. In Dragon Form, your E has a 70% AP. AP ratio and then it will burn for another 80% AP not even including the base on it so if you have 200 AP as example right the initial fireball does about 460 damage that's if you max your E obviously and the burn will be about the same again so hitting one of them is about 900 damage ish at level 10 with just two items and that is on a six or seven second cooldown even your dragon form has a 100% AP ratio on it when you fly on in plus you've got dark harvest you've got your other damage in your kit as well basically it's just disgusting and it does so much damage definitely give this a go it's really fun just remember that you're building like a mage and you're mega squishy so you can't really dive in as normal but once you've got this down it is so good for solo queue so Draven is technically the highest win rate AD in uh, Korea at the moment, but he's not as popular as he is over here. Obviously, he's amazing early to mid game at the moment with the new Conqueror, but they do it a bit differently. We normally now rush Infinity Edge into Rapid Fire Can, or a lot of people do. But Korea almost always go Bloodthirster into Infinity Edge, then Rapid Fire Can afterwards. So they stack AD early to make those crits enormous. I didn't think that the new Conqueror would be as good on him really, but I guess even more healing, more AD stacking up to make you crit harder, and then the early true damage does really help. The cool thing as well with this is that the new Infinity Edge has gone back to bonus crit damage and not making crits do true damage anymore. But Conqueror actually does that now. So we basically got like the old IE and the new IE passive active at the same time, if that makes sense. You can run Sorcery Secondary, by the way, but one of the reasons I'm mentioning today is because of this build. I found a lot of people going. This one is using Futures and you have to kind of plan for it, but it means getting B off Sword kind of guaranteed early or even earlier into the game, getting big items on every base. So you can ideally snowball even harder in lane with an item lead. It seems to actually win a lot, but it definitely has one of these things that you have to think about it a little bit more and not just face roll through the game. Now, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this one, but Zed is now one of the most played champions in Korea again since the new patch, and these are after his adjustments. I say adjustments because that's how Riot said it was. Uh, some more attack speed per level, more Q damage, much better W range and cooldown, but you lost the AD from your passive on your ultimate. Rank 1 was just 5% of their AD, so it isn't huge, but it seems like he is now better early to mid game. Not the best at like 3 to 4 items, but then much, much better at full build again. This is something that actually Riot targeted as well, saying that his late game wasn't good enough, and it seems that like they might have actually finally fixed that. Legitimately, his best win rate right now is after 40 minutes. That'd be when the 10% more AD on his Q kicks in, and the extra shadow range might actually make team fights a little bit easier. There is nothing too new about the build or runes or anything like that. Ultimate Hunter has been around for quite a while, and with CDR in the build as well, it means you can ult all the time and definitely catch people off guard. Also, by the way, a kind of a little side thing, uh, just to finish this off, Kastin was nerfed a while ago against AD champions specifically, and now one of Zed's best matchups is against him so at least it might be a way to shut that champion down if you're having some troubles Velcro support is our next one to look at. It seems like Ki has kind of risen up a bit now that Bran and Zyra aren't as strong as supports. Most of the time, they legit rush into a Ludens now and they play for pure damage. They aren't really about this burn and slow build that we have seen. Now it's really just about bursts. And I've seen this a lot with picks like Lux as well, actually. One of the really big things this patch that I wanted to mention, though, is like why he's way better, is because of the Thresh nerfs. They nerfed his Q so he can't throw it out as much and it costs more mana, which makes it safer to play against him as a ranged champion. As long as you can dodge a few times, at least you have to dodge for less time and you have more time to punish him now and poke back. He's not that great against stuff like Alistair or Blesskrang, but against Mage he does well, against Thresh he does well as well, and this is a way to play more carry as a support. On average, he will do more damage than the AD carry in the game, probably topping the damage charts honestly, he has the knockup and he's extremely high range, so he's pretty safe. Jax is one that I want to mention as well. He might not seem that new, but his win rate hasn't been that amazing since he started getting consistently nerfed quite a few patches ago. This patch though, in 9.4, the new Conqueror and the Spear of Sojin combination has cast 
catapulted him up to the number one spot. This is honestly like a pretty overpowered pick right now. The new Conqueror is basically perfect. It stacks up with his passive. He can use his W as an auto reset. He attacks insanely quickly anyway, and then he ramps up to full damage about the same time that Conqueror activates. Spear of Sojin though is just stupid. Every side that I can find says that if you get this on Jax, you have over a 60% win rate. That in itself is pretty stupid, but in game you'll soon realize why when he can spam his counter strike out constantly. When he's trying to fight him, he can constantly use it. It means more stuns, more dodging, always slapping you in the face for even more damage. Basically, the short version is a Jax with Conqueror, and this setup is insane. It's overpowered and one of the best champions in the entire game at the moment, especially in Korea. That's going to be everything that we have from Korea on this patch on 9.4, so thank you very much for watching. It should give you a really good idea of a few things that are much better now that you can maybe try out. Let me know which of these you've been seeing. I've actually seen quite a lot of these recently, but for now, I will leave you with the robots.